Mushroom decor is everywhere right now, and at first I didn't really care for this trend, but the more I saw it, the more I started to love it. So today I'm sharing some fun spring decor, including several mushroom ideas. First up, I found these adorable little ceramic garden mushrooms at the Dollar Tree. These are perfect just how they are, but of course I'm gonna give them a little makeover. Also, I just wanna throw this out there. I have seen these exact mushrooms listed on Etsy for $15 and claiming to be vintage. Please don't be fooled by sellers upcharging Dollar Tree items when they haven't done anything to it. Anyways, I removed the bottom sticker and then I'm gonna apply gold leaf to the top of one of these mushrooms. I typically use the gold leaf flakes on my projects, but I've been wanting to give the sheets a try, especially for a project like this where I need to cover a large surface area. I picked up the sheets at Hobby Lobby, but you can get them anywhere craft supplies are sold. I have all of these supplies listed in my description box. But you guys, I have used the flakes on countless projects and the container is still full. That shows you just how far this stuff goes. You wanna cover the surface where the gold leaf will go with a metal leaf adhesive. I dropped a dab of the glue on my desk, so I was scooping that up at first and added it all over the top of the mushroom. I also put glue underneath of the mushroom cap, and then I set this aside to dry for about 30 minutes. You wanna let that glue dry and become tacky before adding your metal leaf. Here you can see the glue has dried. It's no longer white, but has kind of a milky look to the ceramic glaze top. Now I'm getting out my gold leaf sheets and carefully going to add it on top. I mentioned in a previous video, I thought the sheets might give a smoother look. This might not have been the best test piece since it's a curved surface, but I definitely still got wrinkles in the final result. I'm still super happy with how it turned out though. On areas where the leaf didn't adhere right away, I just picked up some of that scrap and reapplied it. Once all the metal leaf is on, you wanna take a brush. I use a paintbrush and dust off any loose pieces. All right, I thought this little guy was done, but I decided to give the bottom an upgrade as well. I painted the whole thing white and there are little indents around the stipe, which I learned is what the mushroom stem is called. I thought it would be cute to add gold leaf there as well. I took a tiny little detail brush to add the adhesive to the little details and then added my gold leaf in with tweezers once it dried. This part was tricky. I ended up having to go over it twice with my glue to get the gold leaf to stick. It was also challenging just getting that gold leaf into those tiny little divots. Now for the second little Dollar Tree mushroom, this one is super easy. I just wanted to give the top a little patina look. So I painted it with my bronze patina paint by Dixie Belle. I've used this stuff a few times, but still not sure how I feel about it. You have to shake the paint really well because there are bits of metal in it. That's what causes the patina reaction once you add the spray. So I painted the mushroom cap with the bronze paint and let that dry. Then you wanna add a second coat, and this time you add the patina spray while the bronze paint is still wet. I like to add it on with a sponge just because I don't like the way that it looks when the spray runs and drips, but if you like that look, you can certainly spray it on as well. Then you just set it aside and let the patina do its job. <laughs> Next 
next set, I looked around my craft room to see what I could combine together to make a mushroom with. I have a bunch of spindles and thought that would look super cute as the stipe and then a Dollar Tree planter for the cap. Oh my gosh, how cute. I cut the spindle down a little bit, but I wish I would have made it taller and left that top part on. That's okay, I can always make another one. Next, I glued the planter to the spindle using my type bond glue. Then I took the bottom of the spindle that I cut off and found this little bowl in my stash for the cap and glued those together as well. I am obsessed with this little one, you guys. Just wait until you see the final reveal. You could leave these ones just like this. They would be super cute, but I'm gonna make them even cuter. All right, I'm annoying myself gushing over how cute these things are, so let's move on. You have got to be kidding me. I dropped my favorite mushroom in that bowl shattered. I was not scrapping this project, so I glued the broken pieces back together using my Starbond super glue. I wanted to paint the cap as well, and since it's a slick, shiny surface, try to say that five times fast, I'm using my Dixie Belle Slick Stick first so the paint doesn't scratch right off. Once that was dry, I painted the cap in Lichen by Fusion Mineral Paint. I love this color. Then I got out my white puff paint and added little dots all around the mushroom cap. When adding the dots, I didn't wanna see those stiff peaks from lifting the bottle tip away, so I would swirl my hand in the bottle to help prevent that from happening. You can still see the peak a little here, but as it dried, that flattened and went away. I was trying not to make the dots too uniform, but I think it ended up looking exactly that way. This is my favorite little mushroom piece today. I love him so much, even with that cracked glass. Now for the other spindle mushroom, I painted the planter Sandcastle by Dixie Belle. I had to give this one three coats of paint and then I sanded it down lightly to try and remove some of those brush strokes. I wanted to bring out some of the details around the planter, so I got my DIY dark wax and used a little detail brush to add it in between all those lines around the pot. I also added the dark wax to the rim of the pot and over that little filigree detail. When adding the wax over the filigree, I held my paintbrush flat and not straight up and down. That way it only glided over those raised areas. I didn't want the wax to stay so dark, so after I added it all on, I went back over top of it with the sandcastle paint to tone it down a bit. This mushroom does have a big hole in the spindle from when this was originally a chair. You could always fill that in with a dowel or something, but I just left it as is. The hole can be on the back. This one is so easy, don't blink because you might miss it. I picked up this bud vase from the Dollar Tree along with these plastic decorative bowls that came in a four pack. This time I'm using E6000 to attach the pieces and that's it for this one. I think it is so stunning left clear like this, but you could absolutely paint it or add colored Mod Podge for a colored glass look, but I loved it just how it is. Thank you. 
for this project, I was looking at this Dollar Tree hanging basket, and again, I thought I can use that as a mushroom cap. But what do I use for the stipe? First, I removed the chain, and if you recreate this one, cut off those pieces that connect the chain as well. I wasn't sure how I was going to do this one at first, and I left them on, but I do cut them off later. Velvet textures are everywhere right now, and I've had this IKEA pillow cover in my stash for a while. It's the perfect amount of fabric for this project. I first cut open the pillowcase so it was one sheet. Next, I wanted there to be some detail on the mushroom cap and didn't wanna just wrap the outside with it. So of course I made things difficult and cut out triangle pieces that were a little bit bigger than the spaces between each wire. Then I'm gonna start adding them onto the hanging basket. I'm just using hot glue here and I wrapped the very top of the piece of triangle around the inner circle to attach it. Then glued the edges along the wire, but I did not glue the bottom on just yet. Here's where it gets a little bit tricky. I glued the top of the next triangle on the same way. And then I wanted there to be a raw edge seam along where that wire section is. So I had to flip the edges up and glue them together. I did this bit by bit to make sure it flowed along the wire nicely. This first one was easy, but as I kept going, some of the sections were a little bit more difficult than others, trying to get those outside edges to look good and relatively cohesive, but I think it turned out pretty good. Once I had all the panels on, I trimmed up the raw edges so they were pretty even and stood up how I wanted them to. Then I wrapped the bottom of the fabric onto the inside and glued it down. This is where I realized I wasn't sure what I was doing with those pieces that connected the chain. I still left them on for now and glued the fabric around them, but it looked kinda silly. Now, to cover the open circle on top, I grabbed a wood ring and a scrap piece of the fabric to cover it. The fabric scrap barely fit, but I somehow made it work and then glued that on top. Okay, now that the top is done, I need to figure out the bottom. I found this vase in my craft room that was a good shape and wrapped it with the second half of the fabric pillowcase. I'm sure there was a much better way to wrap this, but I kind of made it difficult. I thought I had pulled it tight, but somehow ended up with a loose section where the seam is on the back. I thought it was gonna be a hot mess, but I glued it down to look somewhat decent. For the top of the vase, I wasn't even going to attempt to make this look smooth, so I just gathered all the fabric together and put a rubber band around it. 
This part will be hidden by the top, so I wasn't worried about it. This vase wasn't quite tall enough for the look I wanted, so I added a few popsicle sticks to the top and then a few Jenga blocks on top of that to add some height. That was it for this one. I'm not sure if I love it, but it's all right. I think it would be really cute turned into a lamp. This is another super easy and quick project. I know it's not a mushroom, but I've been wanting to do something with these Monstera pieces I've had from the Dollar Tree for a while now. Now I like the look of this as a solid black shelf sitter. It's definitely modern looking just how it is, but I'm taking my Robin Buff to cover the top portion of it. I'm showing two colors here, but I only end up using the antique gold. Also, I have to tell you guys, if you watch my kitchen makeover series where I put rub and buff on my faucet, it is not holding up. I really didn't think it was going to, but wanted to try that out anyways. Eventually, I'm gonna need to replace it. But back to this project, I applied the rub and buff all over the Monstera leaf using a makeup brush and I gave it two coats. I covered the pull with the rub and buff as well, but I taped off the base so I didn't get it any, so I didn't get any on there. Then to add just a little bit more detail, I outlined the edges with a black micron pen. I'm not sure if this was really doing anything and my hand kept slipping, getting the marker where I didn't want it. So I went back over those spots with the rub and buff. I also took the marker to detail the indents on the leaf, but I wasn't loving that. I thought I had made it look cheap now. So I took my rub and buff brush with no additional product on it and started dusting it all over the black lines. This softened them out and helped blend them in a little bit. Now I'm still not sure if I love this project, but wanted to include it anyways. I know you guys enjoy seeing the things that don't work just as well as what does. <laughs> I've had these adorable MDF Monstera leaf wall hooks in my stash for at least a year, and I saw Tina Lee here on YouTube create this cool carved wood look with them. I wanted to give this a try for myself. I painted all three Monstera leaves in the color Lichen, and at first I left the hook piece on, but later removed that. This fusion mineral paint actually smells really strong. If that bothers you, you might wanna stay away from this brand. Like I said, I ended up not wanting to keep the peg look and it popped right out super easy. But now I have a hole in the Monstera, so I filled it in with some joint compound and let that dry. I did have to add a few layers of the joint compound because it was such a deep hole and the joint compound shrinks as it dries. Once it was dry, I lightly sanded and then repainted over that area, which I guess I didn't record, but you all know how to paint. Okay, now for the fun part. Well, I thought it would be the fun part, but it was really tedious. I picked up this wood carving tool kit from Hobby Lobby. I only ended up needing the one small curve tool, but I thought these other ones might come in handy someday. I've heard Dollar Tree sells wood carving tools. I've never seen them in my stores, but Tina Lee used the Dollar Tree tool in her video. Next, I took my pencil and drew an outline around the whole leaf about a half of an inch from, in from the edge. Here's what the small curve tool looks like. It's just a little U shape. I'm gonna use this to lightly carve all along the line I just drew. Really, all I'm doing is removing that paint layer on the leaf to see the wood through it. I did not carve too deep. This took a little bit of practice to get used to. I was pushing way too hard and trying to carve too deep right off the bat on this first one. I was also going back and forth over that same line, trying to dig deeper. The tool works much better if you remove shallow layers at a time. 
Go all the way around that outline once and then go back over it if you want it to be deeper. It is way easier on your hand that way, but I also learned it was easier to push the tool away from you. You wanna move that leaf to keep your hand moving in the same direction, rather than trying to move and bend your arm to flow with the leaf. Once the outline was done, I drew a few circles to add the fenestrations that you'd see in a real Monstera leaf. I made sure one of the circles was covering that joint compound filled section so that it wouldn't look different if I carved out that area. Then again, I took my carving tool and outlined those sections. After that, I filled in the whole leaf with little carved out lines. I wanted them to flow with the leaf and not put too much thought into where each line went. I started carving out all the leaf edges first and then worked my way around the leaf and inward toward the middle. I thought that would be the best way to make it flow nicely. So I had three leaves and I was going to just hang them on the wall as a little trio, but then I decided to take one of them and turn it into a little riser. I had the three peg hooks that I removed and thought they would be perfect little feet, but they had that little nub on the top. Oh my God, how many times can I say little? Uh, so I grabbed my mini table saw, which I love so much. I should have used this in last week's wall art video on those dowels. But anyways, I cut the little top off of the pegs. You could also use a miter box or a miter shears to do this. I glued the feet on with my wood glue super glue and let that dry. And then I painted the bottom and the feet with a brushed gold acrylic paint. I just love how this turned out. You guys have to let me know, do you love the mushroom trend? Is it growing on you? Did you even know it was a trend? I'd love to know. See you next week.